Hello, everyone. Uh, here we go with lesson three. So last lesson, lesson two, we talked about conditional statements. Uh, we're going to continue doing conditional statements, but we're going to add a few different types. So first, let's make sure you understood yesterday. There's kind of a recap here. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the conditional, then write the converse and determine the truth value of each. So there's a lot in this first problem here. The hypothesis is two angles have the same measure. I'm going to kind of go shorthand here because of how long I can take writing it all out. If, they, if two angles have the same measure, the conclusion is they are congruent. Is that true or is that false? If two angles have the same measure, are they congruent? Yes, they are. That is true. Okay, the converse then is, now I can't say if they, and that's one thing I didn't really stress in the, in the notes yesterday. Um, make sure your subject and verb and yeah, your pronouns, I guess, make sense. So if I say if they are congruent, well, that doesn't really make any sense. What's they referring to? I haven't said anything yet. So I need to keep the two angles. If two angles are congruent. Now I'm referring, when I say they, I'm referring to those two angles. So now I can say, then they are, or have, I guess, have, not are, the same measure. Um, that truth value of that is also true. If two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. So this conditional and converse combo that we just went over could be written as one of our new terms, a biconditional. Bi meaning two, conditional. We've been talking about that. So basically two conditionals wrapped up in one. A biconditional can be written only, and I should put that here, only when both the conditional and the converse are true. If either one is false, you cannot write a biconditional. To write a biconditional, you take the hypothesis and conclusion and separate them with the phrase, if and only if. Now, this is a little weird, so I'm going to show you symbolically what we're doing here. We learned yesterday that it's P, if P, then Q, right? And you remember, P was the hypothesis and it did not include the word if, right? The conclusion was Q and that did not include the word then. That's important when it comes to biconditionals because the way a biconditional works is P and the arrow goes both ways, Q. Okay, and that those both, both arrows can be replaced with the words if and only if. Okay, so when I'm writing this biconditional, I'm taking P so literally, I'm taking two angles, have the same measure, and then I'm going to replace that double arrow with if and only if. Then I'm going to write the Q, and the Q is they are congruent. So as a whole, that's the biconditional. I'll read it again. Two angles have the same measure if and only if they are congruent. Okay, that's how you do a biconditional. You write the hypothesis, you write the conclusion, and in between them is if and only if. All right, write the biconditional of the following conditional if possible. If two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. Okay, so here's what a lot of people are going to do. They're going to start writing the writing it out. Two lines are parallel if and only if they do not intersect. The problem is. I can't do this one. Why? Well, let's look at the truth values first. Before you can write it by conditional, you have to look at the truth values. The truth value of the conditional is true. If two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. That's true. But the converse says if two lines do not intersect, then the conclusion is they are parallel. 
That's false. We know that, we should know that by now. The counter example is skew lines, right? So if I can't, if I can't write the biconditional, if one of those two statements is false, and it is here, so I can't write the biconditional, okay? In the next example, we're gonna work backwards. So we are going to take a biconditional and write the two conditionals from it, the, the conditional and the converse. So if you remember that P and Q, remember that um, some symbolism there, you can identify the hypothesis by looking at the first part. You get an A plus, that's the word if, and then you see if and only if, right? That's the, that's the double arrow. And then the conclusion is you get a 98% or above. Now, keeping that in mind, you can now say the conditional is P then Q, right? So if you get an A plus, then you get a 98% or above. Now, the truth value of this, you should know whether you know the grading scale or not, that that's true because it came from a biconditional. If it's a biconditional, that means both the conditional and the converse were true, okay? The converse then switches those. If you get a 98% or above, then you get an A plus. Okay. Again, those are both true. Inverses and contrapositives. Those are the final two types of conditional statements. We've got conditional, we've got converse, we've got biconditional. Now we're adding inverses and contrapositives. All right. These statements are conditional statements, still conditional. with special characteristics. Both of them involve a negation, okay? An inverse and a contrapositive really, but we're gonna start with an inverse. An inverse statement negates both the hypothesis and the conclusion. That's all it does, it negates both of them. Well, before I can talk about the inverse and what that means, we have to understand what a negation does. A negation literally takes, if the population, um, of the original of the hypothesis is this, then the negation would be the complete opposite, every other instance, okay? A lot of times it's, it can sound kind of weird and maybe confusing, but a lot of times what it does is it involves the word not. So the dance was fun. Well, the negation of that would be the dance was not fun. Right? If, if I'm looking at the population of people who thought the dance was fun, well, then the negation of that was anyone who thought it was not fun. The figure is not a square. So I'm looking at a figure that's not a square. Well, the negation of that is the figure is a square. So I didn't add the word not because the word not was already there. So I took the word not out. The figure is a square would be the negation. Now, the next one is tricky. A lot of people see X is greater than 10, and here's what they'll write. They'll write X is less than 10. Well, that's close, but let's look at a graph here. X is greater than 10. You may remember this from Algebra 1. Okay, if here's 0, here's 10. X is greater than 10. That's an open circle, and I would shade this way. That's All the numbers in the shading represent X is greater than 10. If I want every other number, that would be everything on the other side of 10, right? So the negation, I'll change it to red here. I would want every other number, which would be all these, right? So you're thinking, what's the problem? Well, the problem is the number 10 itself. 10 does not fit into 
the original statement or the negation. To be a true negation, it's got to, every single number has to fit in either the original or the negation. So 10 has to be included there. So what can I do? I can't change the original statement. So I got to change my negation. So what I would do is if X is greater than 10, right? The negation would be X is less than or equal to 10, All right? Um, there's going to be a question that pops up here. And I want you to answer that, see if you understood it, okay? Write the inverse of the conditional. So now we're gonna actually do an inverse, which we're gonna use the, the negation idea to do that. So the inverse of this statement. So the hypothesis was X squared equals 36. The negation of that is, well, if X squared equals 36, the negation would be if X squared does not equal 36. And the way we write that is it does not equal 36. Then, well, the hypothesis, or sorry, the conclusion is x equals 6. My conclusion would be then x does not equal 6. Right? Um, the truth value of the original statement, if x squared equals 36, then x equals 6. We should know that from previous problems, that that's false. Counterexample is x equals negative six, right? X squared equals 36, x could also equal negative six. The truth value of the inverse though, in this case, x squared does not equal 36. I know that x squared does not equal 36. Well, then I can, can conclude that x definitely does not equal six. I can conclude that, All right? All right, and the final conditional statement, a contrapositive, what it does is it negates and switches the hypothesis and conclusion. I think of this, and I will, I will refer to it a lot as the converse of the inverse. Write the contrapositive of the statement above. So Basically, I'm going to look at this statement. I've already got the inverse, and I'm going to now just swap it. Okay, so if x does not equal 6, then x squared does not equal 36. Now, what's the truth value of that? It's actually false. Now, you're probably like, wait, what? False because all I know is X does not equal six. Okay. So that's basically, I can look at any number except for six. So no matter what number I look at, X squared will not equal 36. And that's true for every number except for negative six. If X was negative six, which would fall into the hypothesis because it's not six, but then negative six squared would be 36, and that would prove the, con the conditional or the contrapositive in this case, false. Okay, now I didn't show you the symbols here. Um, I probably should do that real quick. The negation, right, is written, you see like the tilde there. So symbolically, um, if I have a conditional is P then, if P then Q, the inverse would be not P then not Q. And the contrapositive would be not Q, then not P. Okay. So we have a Venn diagram, and then I'm going to look at all of the statements. Okay. So the conditional statement, we worked on this in the last lesson. If oh, let me get If I'm an NFL player, then I can conclude that I'm a football player. Let's go ahead and do truth value of the statement right away. And that one's true. The converse, 
So I'm going to take the converse of that statement. If I have the conditional, I really don't need the negation anymore, or sorry, the Venn diagram anymore. Um, I will use it to determine the truth value, but for writing the statement, you should be able to just use your conditional. If I'm a football player, then I'm an NFL player. And hopefully you're catching on pretty quickly that that is false. All I know is that I'm a football player. Does that mean I'm in the NFL? No, I could be on a high school football team. I could be on a middle school football team. I could be uh, collegiate, okay? So definitely false. The inverse negates the red one, so the conditional. If I'm not an NFL player, then I'm not a football player. Now that is also false. I'm not an NFL, so I'm not in the NFL. Well, then that means I'm not a football player. That's not true. If you're not in the NFL, that just means you might not be good enough to play in the NFL yet, or you might not be old enough to play in the NFL yet. You could still play football, right? So that's not a true statement. The last one is the, well, the fourth one is the contrapositive which you can look at a couple different things here. You could look at the conditional and negate and switch. Or if you understand that the contrapositive is a negation and a switch, you could look at the inverse, the green one, and just switch that one. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at the green one. If I'm not a football player, then I'm not an NFL player. That's true. If I don't play football at all, then I'm definitely not in the NFL. I'm not a football player at all. Well, then I can conclude that I'm not in the NFL. Makes sense. Now, I only gave you two examples of a contrapositive, but I hope you noticed that in both situations, the truth value of the contrapositive matched the truth value of the conditional. So this one and this one had the same truth value. The previous one, the conditional was false and the contrapositive was false. Okay, and you will notice as you do more of these that the truth value of the contrapositive is always the same as the conditional. I can't say that about any other combination. The conditional and converse, we don't know. The conditional and inverse truth values, we can't conclude anything, okay? But we can conclude that if the conditional is true, the con contrapositive is also true. If the conditional is false, so is the contrapositive, okay? Last thing, why did I not write the fifth statement, the biconditional? Well, because the converse was false. And if the converse is false, I can't do a biconditional, right? And that is the conclusion of lesson three.